last lecture we left off this thought exercise where you were supposed to build an app which takes charge in taking in orders and the chefs can simply pull out the first order that comes out of it and cooks it now this app needs to store that list of orders or that queue of orders so the question now is which is which data structure is more appropriate to use is it better to use an array which we defined earlier as more efficient data structure when it comes to accessing elements or is it more appropriate to use a list where it's more efficient to write down the elements or in this sense is an array more appropriate so that the chefs can pull it can pull the first order uh, more efficiently or is it more appropriate to use a list so that the writers or the servers can simply write the orders very quickly at the end of the list now remember when we said data structures rely on usage context that means depends on the purpose of the algorithm the program itself there are specific data structures that are more appropriate for those contexts and specifically for this context we have another data structure which is what we call the queue now queues are sets of elements placed orderly alongside each other so you could think of queue of people lining up to get their tickets on uh, for the cinema or queue of cars trying to enter a junction or a street corner now in in terms of data structures, we have two basic queues. And first of the queue is what we call a stack. So a stack implements a last in first out policy. So wh whoever comes in last, he or that element is the first one to be to go out, basically. So the, the data structure itself has the property called the top meaning the stack knows or the user can identify which element is at the top or at the forefront of the stack so you could imagine like a can of pringles where you can see the first chip at the top of the stack and not really the first one that came in which is at the bottom of the can or you can also think of it that when you want to put pringles on a chips on a can the first one that goes in goes straight at the bottom of the, of the can and the last one goes at the top of the can and it's also the first one uh that you will pick uh when you start consuming your pringles right so it's a last in first out so if for you to be able to remember a stack just remember a can of pringles now for visual purposes we have uh, two main operations for stack. We have the push and we also have the pop. Figure A or the first three um, figures here uh, shows how push works. So basically we push an element and place it at the top of the stack. So at the first one, when we push A, since it's an empty stack, it becomes the first element. So we're basically adding it at the top of a zero element stack. Now we push another element B. So it's now placed at the top of A. Then we push C, which is now placed at the top of A and B stack. Now when we pop an element, that means we will remove what we can remove basically in the queue. So since we only know the top of the stack and to, since stacks implement the last in first out policy, we simply pop um, instructions. Okay, So the pop command or script or code can only look at the top element and take it off uh, from the stack. So that means when we implement a pop on the existing stack, it will simply remove C from the stack and reassign the top pointer to B. 
So B becomes the new top for uh, this stack after C has been popped off. Now, when we pop again this that that stack, we will remove the currently top element, which is B. Now, the top pointer points now at element A, which is now the current top of this stack. Okay, so it's it. You can imagine again a can of Pringles, where you can add more chips into the can or more items into the can and it's placed directly at the top of the stack and when you take out an element or a chip you can only remove the top layer or the top element and not the um not the hidden layers underneath the top element okay so the question here is if you're implementing a stack can you actually remove b uh which is at the middle element the question is yes but it's not as straightforward because you need to pop the top elements first and then push them again back into the stack so directly speaking you can only remove what is currently at the top of the stack now this data structure is actually not new to everyone if you can you recall where you first encountered stacks? That would be great. Just to give you the answer, we discussed stacks when we discussed recursion. So what happens is, while the current loop or current um, uh, iteration is working or is running, we then call the same function and place it at the top of that, st of the st that stack. Okay, and then if we call again the same function or method, then we place it again at the top. Okay, once we reach the base case, that's when each of the instructions will be pop off until we arrive or we solve again the bigger recursion, uh, the, the main function or the first function. So we have encountered stacks back then during the recursion module. Now the second queue uh that we can implement uh using any programming language is generally we can call it a queue okay so it's a first in first out um policy so it's a first come first serve basis so if you look at the order queue um earlier the example you can actually implement a queue so whichever whichever order comes in first it can be pulled out uh, it will be pulled out first to be cooked by the chef so it knows two things compared to stacks where it only stacks only know one thing which is that at the top or the end of the stack queues would know which elements are at the front and at the back or the other end of the queue okay so you could imagine again a line or a queue of people or cars so if you want to add or to pop again into the queue you can simply add it at the back of the queue so we insert element e at the back and if we want if we want to delete elements we simply look at the front of the queue so since a is the first element in then it goes out first now on the right hand side we have two boxes of algorithms uh, the top box is are the, are the different algorithms for uh stack so first one is stack empty which identifies if the stack is empty so it basically asks it's, it basically looks if the top index is zero then we return true that the stack is empty if not if it's not zero then it's false now for push we take the top element and add one so let's say if we have a if we currently have a five element stack we add one to five then we have six and then we assign the new element into that new index okay so let's say from an index perspective if we have a five element then the top index is four since we start with zero then we add one then we assign element x to index five okay so that's how push works now when we pop 
uh, or remove elements from a stack, okay, there are two conditions. If the stack is empty, then it returns an error, which is what we call the underflow error. Underflow error means there's really nothing to be popped from an empty stack. So if we go, uh, if we uh, if we remove it from zero element uh, stack, then okay, it will go negative, and negative element stacks don't exist. So we return an underflow error. If it's not empty, basically the else statement. Now we take the top element, we reduce it by one, and we return the uh, the, the previously top element. So we remove the uh, we assign the new top as the next element below the, the top of the stack and then we return the previously top of the stack okay so that's how it works now the second box of algorithms at the bottom are the different algorithms for queues which is the in queue if you want to insert elements and the queue if you want to remove elements now in nq the first line uh, basically states that we look we assign x at the tail of the q and if the tail is equal to the length of q then we as we assign tail equals one else we move the tail um we add additional one to the currently existing tail okay so if the tail um, index let's say is at four then we assign uh, we assign we, we add a new element then the new tail will be will add one so it will be five okay now in the queue okay we now look at the head of um, the queue so we assign it at variable X and if the head is equal to the length which means that there's only one element therefore the index for head will be equal to one else we will actually add one into the head okay and then we return the previously element that we assigned to x other methods that can run on stacks and queues are the following so for stack again you can push where you add element into the stack you can pop where you remove and return the topmost element you can also look at which element is at the top of the stack. Basically, you return the topmost element without actually removing it from the stack. You can also count the number of elements in the stack. And you can also clear or empty all the elements in the stack. Now, in queue, they have the similar uh, methods. So we have the NQ to insert elements at the tail or at the rear of the queue. You can also you have the queue to remove and return the topmost or the frontmost element. You can also peak, okay, which is the topmost element in the queue. You can also count and you can also clear or empty the queue. Now another um, data structure which is more generalized is what we call the dictionary. So a dictionary is a dynamic set which can support operations like insert, delete, and specifically test membership. Okay, so it's a general purpose data structure for storing a group of objects. So there are two main components in a dictionary. One is we have a set of keys and two, we have the values which are uniquely identified by the keys from the set of keys. And if you look at different programming languages, you can see you can, it's implemented or it's called as associative array, a hash, a map or hash map. Okay, so for example, we have this dictionary. Okay, so we have a, a dictionary called scores, and we have these four students and their existing scores. Note that these scores are hypothetical. It doesn't reflect reality. Okay, so um, we, we assign the value 87 to index Angelo. We assign the value 91 to index Kiana, value 95 to index Jane, and uh, value 92 to index Polo. So, if we call score Angelo, what will be the output?
Okay, the answer would be 87. Now, if we actually call score gab, what will be the output? It can result to null or to none or to an error because currently index gab is not mapped into a specific value. Now, how does this work? On the right hand side, you have the abstracted sets. You have the set of actual keys or, actu or, or the currently mapped keys. So we have Kiana, Polo, Angelo, Jenny, indices, which are currently mapped into specific values. We also have the other indices, which from the universal set of keys. And in this case, let's say my MSIS 30 students. We have other students like Timothy, Lucia, Josiah, Gerard, Gab, Wesley, which are currently not mapped yet to specific value so we can see on the right hand side the set of keys and the set of values mapped to each key so if a pointer exists then that means it's in the dictionary pointer means or you can um, look at the arrows and see that there's a pointer between the key and the values so from Kiana, it's there's a pointer pointing towards value 91, or it should be the other way around. So the key one uh, points to Kiana. Okay, 87 uh, is being pointed by uh, by Angelo. Okay, uh, there's also a pointer between Janney and 95, and also there's a pointer connecting Polo and 92. So what happens to the other keys? So we have the Wesley, Timothy, and the other dark grade keys. So since they are not yet mapped, therefore it will return null or none. Okay. So in this case, dictionaries actually store the key value mapping or the pointers themselves. Or in this case, it's the arrow between the key and the values um, table on the slide. So Else, if it's not, if there's no pointer or there's no arrow, it returns null. Okay. So in this case, again, earlier dictionaries are dynamic sets where we can implement insert, delete, and test membership. This is actually how we, uh, how test membership can be implemented. So the membership of an element or a key, okay, can be tested by simply looking at what by simply looking whether there's a mapping between them or not okay so if a currently mapped key is assigned of a different value okay so let's say we have another instruction where we say score kiana equals 98 for example then we add another element here on the value table which is 98 and then reroute the pointer from 91 to 98 Okay, so it remaps the key to the new value. So in essence, okay, or on the end user side, it overwrites the old value. Okay, so it doesn't really, and then if there's no pointer connecting to the value, then we can simply uh, remove it from the current table. Right, so again, dictionary store key value mapping. Okay, if the mapping or the arrow doesn't exist, it returns null. Hence, you can actually test membership. And if we uh, assign a new value to a specific index, it remaps or redirects the arrow to that new value, overwriting or virtually overwriting the previous value. So how does it look like in um, the world of Python? Okay, so we discussed sets, we discussed arrays, lists, stack, queue, and dictionaries. Okay, for sets, Python has a native command called set, and then you can just simply input some parameters. Okay, um, arrays, you can use the NumPy uh, library to implement arrays. Lists can be created using square brackets. Stacks can be created using the queue library or collections library, the same as queue. And dictionaries can be formed using curly braces. So you can simply look up these different Python operations and try and test them out and see if um, these operations that we've discussed today 
uh, can be observed uh, in Python. Right, that ends the module for elementary data structures. I'll see you next meeting. Goodbye.